In a world where Africans have lost their roots, it has become of vital importance to document our ways. In an effort to reverse the brainwashing of the past, where we were made to believe our ways are demonic, we are pressed to create dignified and respectful platforms to unpack our spiritual ways. Umoya Uright, Umoya Ulight. Hi, Moya Wright. We see your support. We are so, so thankful. Thank you for the, all the new subscriptions. Thank you so much also for the donations. You know that um, White Capital is not going to be supporting us. <laughs> so we definitely need you to make sure that the lights stay on and that the team can get paid. Thank you so, so much. Hashtag Moya. You know what to do. You know to spread the word. Can't wait for today's episode. I don't look this good for nothing, guys. We got plans today. <laughs> we have got plans. I can't even sit still because the energy is so big in the space already. You guys always ask me for this lady. So I'm always going to have to give you this lady until, until, until. We are so blessed to be living in this time where we are witnessing a queen and we're getting our ind indigenous knowledge and we are being fed and... She is so readily available to us, even during the premiere of this episode. I can assure you, she will be there to answer all your com comments. Hopefully, we'll also have a Twitter space with her. The legendary, the iconic, our queen, our mother, Dr. Kanyitile Litchfield Shawalala. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ntsiki Nyabonga. We appeal. Pila, I'm even, you know your energy, so I'm even more than Upila. Umoya, all right. Siabulela, Tamaku, Togoza. I know you want to start Makosi. with your... Uh, mm. I do, and the Ang Petanga is naive for some reason. I have been away from home since Monday. Um, but again... That's what I like about spirituality. It is not cast in stone. Mm. It's not John 316, so it's mm. creatively applied. So we'll do a creative application today and just speak the word. Uh, the light is there. Uh, the water, Sizo Yenzanje, the water and the air. Um, Sizo Shota Ngomlota. Or the Umshaba, is naive. So Togozani. Madloze Africa, Sikales Bonga Madloze Ndao, Ngoba Namshanji, AMP D Studio, Kotwage, anciently, Lom Shaba Unabanigas Bao, Ingaba Zabo, Ezawe La La, Abangwa Jwala, Imimoya Yabo Yo Esa Petela, So Stogo Zagubo, Stella Gubim Vume, Gutis Kubege, Maloge Sogwenza Namshanji. Sitoko zikuma jlozi, um, asekaya ujlamini, abo mama izlikula jleleza kwa lobamba, eziti zibadla zibe zibadla ubulisa. Bo nabala lele pondu inle nyati, bende la benyati nbate vabalegela. Bo nalaba bo pela lbo le mfundi ni bati mfatu, bo tala ganzi bante la bafatu bate bahaugela. E malangi nanga ilimvu le mnyame sabe mafini la togo zaan bo jlamini. Ngin biza kutege bo jlamini, anciently. Ning Agabi Bonala Bosla Mini, Kung Agabi Kwabangu, Ning Agabi Ki Africa, Nagabi Kon Europe, Mshaba Usalungi, Usatwe Bile, Gusabusa Isin to Ing Agabi Koinkolo, Yenko Sison and Goshagalo, irreligion. Nibiza O Lichfield, Nan Ibo Lichfield, I call you in pre European times when Europeans were in spirituality before they were chiseled by force by the barrel of a gun and by mass burnings and shootings by the Catholic Church, sanctioned by Vatican. You were chiseled into Christianity. I call you when you were in spirituality, when matriarchy was still the reigning force amongst you. Togo Zani, Malo Zagbo Baba. Ngibiza, itu nyuazami, the queens, in Lofugazi, onji ngambande, the kiluanji of the Ndongo in Matamba Kingdom. Usaronia, the Panther Queen of the Anza people. Umantatisi, Wabatokwa. Mamchisani, Wamakololo. Mujajiwan, Mujaji 2. The true rain queens, whoever followed 
after them truly they didn't follow the custom so that's why that kingdom is falling apart so we give praise this morning to Mjaji 1 and Mjaji 2 who agreed to take what was called the ritual murder to complete the cycle of being a rain queen the only two the founders sibongo mukaba ikaja magandaba ikhawe kazi ah baningi manje bayazi nabo anke ngibabize bonke ithunyazami engafika ngakubo kodwa bayazi ukuthi ngiyabavuma ngihamba nabo thokozani izindlu ufikazi thokozani makhosi kazi thokozani makhosi azana thokozani bomama thokozani zintombi thokozani mantomba zana em ngibiza basebukhweni aboshabalala ihlobo ke oshabalala nodlamini so angwazi ukungababizi ngaphandle kokuthi abasebukhweni ushabalala nodlamini are of the same eh mpande so bayihlobo eh bahamba nomuntu imanze the mother to my husband nabo ihlobo nokunene ukunene umama ka mama mugogo so amadlo zami nje mhlambe kungakho yeah but also kungakho mhlambe amadlo zami abalwe imina you know abantu abaningeke ba advise nangumamela athi kwenzeka lokho nalo kunalokho ngithi ithi amadlo zakho ayalwa lakho and when they fight in the spirit you will feel it in your body and your life will show my ancestors scarcely fight truly ngoba ba related and then nabo abo lichfield umama oza ukoko kababam waye unamabuzu unamabuzu wa ushabalala ngapa ngakbo mama ozala ubaba kama mama mbegu umabuza nae and they were sisters so no amato zam truly are so related it's compact abalwi where they are and i can see it through my life Sia babonga ngelu bize awa kongo ba asquazu biza malos am asale la arene in the space awa ko enge ko because yours will then start fighting. No, mine are definitely I definitely call them o me ya o tuani no sbe o salaglandelo o vez o kenga o pingle sangen daza la mfaso beleti wanyi sanga peshi kum lanjan o kaka o kogashe. Okay. I can't believe you know what? Sorry to, to cut you off. I can't <laughs> believe this is all still part of the introduction. Yes. It's not even introduction, this is part of the prayer. Ngoba we have changed umtandazo to mean Baba Weto says Zulwini or Nekamalga Yesu. Umtandazo lo ikamilit umtandazo lali kona emandulu alfigang ane Christianity. So lentwe sienze msamo siya tandaz, siya kulega ngesi zulu. Kunga kona unge nendi niyo mundu tis kulegi le kai kulege madlo zinu. Fuma madlo za vume ale ikaya agwa mgele. So bes kulega aska figi nagu introduction. Bes sa kulega nj. Mm. And what's interesting about your focus this morning, you, you mentioned is Tunya Zako that are women. So the space right now is full of the women's spirit. And as a result, we're going to center today's conversation around women. Mm. I'm going to give you all the space to go in whatever direction you would mm. like to and wherever you would like to start. Mm. For the latitude. I think I want to start with something which is a developmental program that affects everyone on earth as a matter of fact because it's a United Nations agenda. It's called the Sustainable Development Goals, shortened as SDGs. There are 17. Each one of them has an indicator. I mean, it has to be measurable. And this is supposed to be achieved by 2030, by the way, by all countries. I like the one on gender, number five. Mm gender equality but i don't agree as an african woman on the first indicator if you look at all those indicators in fact they don't address the plight of the african woman you can tell that they are high sounding written predominantly by white males i mean if it's a un agenda although the general assembly would have said okay to it but primarily the thought the think tanks is the Security Council where we are not represented because the Security Council is five countries and it, it's America, Britain, France, China, Russia. And China and Russia are always overruled by these three because they vote together. Uh, so the first indicator it we should have achieved such and such a percentage uh, of putting women on contraception by 2030. And I'm just thinking, really? 
Is that an indicator to measure gender equality? We will be equal with men if we are on contraception. No, guys. I don't know. Europe has this thing about population growth. We don't. Ngembela, we don't. I have no issues with African babies popping all over. There's as ample long, land also. Yes, as long as people can look after them. As long as we restore communities so that we raise children together and we don't leave it up to, oh, mama bazele. But that cannot be an indicator. They are pressing issues for the African women, which is equity. Because like in South Africa, the ANC has passed laws on equality. Mabatata ngo 94. It has only served to anger patriarchists. That's why there's such a backlash of GBV, of, of ill treatment of women, of sex for something, sex for promotion, sex for employment, because sex is a weapon of power for patriarchists. It's to show the woman this is where you belong. So if you go and pass laws on equality, but you have not ensured equity, because there's no equality without equity, and maybe we should pause and say to people, what is equity? Mm. Equity, in short, is an enabling environment. If you go and say there should be 55% women MPs in the next four years. You need to look at the infrastructure of MPs and say, where does this infrastructure defame or de dejuice the power of a female MP? Because if the, the, the conditions are still such that a female MP will still be nothing but a woman, it does not help to have... 52% of them, where men are 48%, they will still be powerless. That's equity. So I don't see how contraception brings equity. I truly do not, except for the race, the Caucasian race, which has an issue with population growth. We don't have an issue with population growth. We have land in Africa. Europe is really small. Mm. Don't mind the maps that show you Europe, Europe ballooned. I dare all your listeners to go and see what is called the true reflection of the maps, because people have started talking about them and drawing them. Europe is so small, so they must have an issue with population explosion because they don't want to live on top of each other. We have such ample land, truly one billion is small. They reduced us anyway through the slave trade, through colonialism, they're still reducing us through food and all these other things. So no, we want to grow. We are not interested in population reduction. So that indicator for me is what any African think tank or pressure group on SDGs because it's a good agenda. I don't want us by saying this to think I'm saying SDGs must be abandoned. It's a good development agenda. It forces our governments to do the right thing. Mm. But as we apply Africans, let's be creative. Let's come with our own indicators. The first one of them for gender being develop equitable environment and structures and system to achieve equality. Because I need we are fighting patriarchy. Yes. So just saying equality does not serve us. It actually makes patriarchy angry. We have a backlash. We suffer more by passing equality laws without ensuring equity. I mean, the other indicator which is big for you and me, Ziggy, is social security for an African woman. I can't go and run even at six in the morning in quiet areas, even if it's already daybreak, if the area is too abundant, I can't go and run. So for me, what's better, being on contraception or being safe uh, as a female? So the indicator for me surely is safety before it even talks about contraception, because I'll die before I'm even on contraception. I will be raped at 9, 10, before I can even be on contraception as an African girl. So for me, equity and safety and security are primary indicators under gender. And South Africa now is rated as having done well on gender because it means more and more of us have been put on contraception, which I even question. And I know feminists are going to attack me under after this episode, but I, do, I dare tell all the African people, go do contraception the way we did it before. So I don't even trust these things they give us as contraception. Yeah. That's eating away our fertility. Where's our fertility gone to? Can someone explain? My mom had eight kids. She didn't try to have children. She just had children. But we are eight at home. I'm the last child. I'm looking at all of us four girls. We don't have children past two. Ganjani. Mm. And some people will tell you, I wasn't even on contraception, and I am a case in point. I have never been on contraception. I only have two kids. So what happened to our fertility? What's mm. eating it away? Why are we not allowed to draw the conclusion that it is these contraceptions that they give us.
Bafunas fane nabo because this thing of I'm trying to have a child is not an African thing. The other two races maybe, and I'll say the two races again. Remember, Mongoloid race that's yellow people, Caucasian race that's white people, Negroid race that's Africans. We don't try to have babies. We just have babies. Guys, we are fertile. <laughs> and it's a good thing. <laughs> so I wanted that to pass out of the way before we get to any other thing. So which, which, what other indicators are there um, for women and gender equality that the UN is working on? Yeah? Uh, well, five is gender. I think uh, uh, pertinent for East South Africa mm. would be UFO also on education. Mm. And U1 on ending, uh, I think, I'm not sure if it's one or two, I don't want to say it for sure, but mm. one and two, one talks of poverty, one talks of zero hunger. That's pertinent also to, to, to African women because, you know, I say to people, get this picture. If you stayed with kids, whether they are 30, 29, they're old enough. Whether you had a husband who's your age, at the end of the day, when day, when night falls, and Melebuzliwe, who stresses about what to put on the table? <laughs> it's you. You are all at home, you are all unemployed, but they still look to you to say, Sizan nam Like, and it's not a bad thing for an African woman. And it's in a history, because pre colonially we controlled agriculture. And because we controlled agriculture, I say this all the time, we then controlled the markets. Because we controlled the markets, we controlled the economy. Because we controlled that, we controlled what must be eaten. Because we knew this herb goes with this. This, you, it already has water. So are we pegging a manzi? So that's how we became the alpha and omega of food provision in the household. Mm. It wasn't a punishment. So as in Yuzindo, they are in our psyche as jigi and it. So bazo pega wena because it's just, it's been our spiritual role, you know, pre-colonially. I know now it's bastardized because it looks like the woman's place is in the kitchen. It never was. We did that because it gave us so much power. We were the economists, the agriculturalists, the mm. traders. We were the seed bearers. We kept the seeds. We knew this seed must be kept this way. And remember, anciently, began a go shop, right? So if the seeds, the more for the new planting season, you are fucked as that family. That was the role of the woman. Mm. To say this food can be kept until the next harvest, but this is how it must be kept. It can be dried this way. It was so much power. Anybody will respect anyone that controls their stomach. That, that's yes. the power that we had. That's why people normally say put your money where your heart or your stomach is. So we had that respect. So those two SDGs then on hunger and, and, and on zero poverty speak to the African women so much because, guys, we are truly tired of providing from nothing. Mm. We are truly tired of always making a plan, making ends meet so the family can eat, you know. So that will work in our favor. The one on education, our kids... It's, it's it, 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 for loyal. Our kids are not given e education that leads to entrepreneurship, even if when you talk to the NC government and you say there's unemployment, but I guys create your own jobs. Yeah, you should have given me education that empowers me enough to create my own jobs. Mm. Again. So the one on education, Yaitanda. But also just making sure that people are educated. Because we are born in Manje, we are speaking English. You and me are both Sowetans. Yes. While we can speak African languages, my niece is Zuleng Senze Skolen. It can, can never be Uzulu Lo was a case at end. Yes. So no man has Kuluma Manje, so Hambang Hambe, somewhere in Fagi English. Yes. So if we give Abandana Bet education that truly equips them as Africans first, but also pre preparing them for the global world. Yes. It works for the African women because it means mm. I have less people to pay for a school win and then six years banga sebins, but they have a paper. That I sacrificed everything to pay for but ali you jing but ala in but nabakita sebashelika nya bonja still. Got the mali on kipele gubo be school win. So that one on education is also important for the African women. And maybe I dare say in Tiggy so we move to the next thing. All these seventeen SDGs truly are important for the African women. They truly are. But there's one also on, on safety and security. That's what we want. Can you so, know what's SDG for people who don't know? Sustainable Development Goals. So this is the background. Uh, Ghana 1957 became free. And Kwame Nkrumah said, let us not borrow money from the IMF and the World Bank. 
International Monetary Fund, IMF, World Bank. We call them uh, finance development institutions uh, or, or international financial institutions. They are the ones that borrow money to governments for development. They profile themselves as development banks, if you can call it that way. But they had a Africa, because of racism, such stringent attachments to those funds. They kept changing names, but the ones that stayed for long and really fucked us backward as a continent are called Structural Adjustment Programs, SAPs. SAPs simply meant the currency shall be uh, calculated vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. Uh, it also meant uh, there are things it can do or not do in terms of development, and you'll see that where development really mattered, that money couldn't go there. It came with exorbitant interest rates. Mm. That's what made us into debt states. Mm. That's why we are all indebted now mm. in Africa. Uh, it came with such racist conditionalities. That's why Umudi can sit and decide. Kuti, oh, Irandi, anenzanga logo. We see a blacklist, so Irandi visas a dollar. Now it's no longer 18, it will drop mm. to 20 something, you know. It, it, it's when they tied our, our currencies to e dollar. So those conditions ama SAPs really hampered any form of development. It was one step back, two steps backward, one step, but in the process we're getting indebted. So African countries started raising their voices in the General Assembly to say no guys, no, 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 no. Development for who? We understand but be good for investment. Curtail your Workers bang a strike and we are known as a, a, a country with workers abang a because we are known as a toy toy country, we are a protest country, and it's historical and I'm proud of it actually to be a pro, to, to be a protest country. But capital does not like that. Mm. Bafuna people have a tobelum teto, so capital is not disturbed, so production is not disturbed. So but African countries started as development for who? This thing of saying let us be okay for investment. Let us be okay for, for foreign currency. It still benefits Western countries and capital. It doesn't benefit our people. So that's how the SDGs came into being. Good. It's, it should be development, but sustainable mm. development, not just development. I love the point you made about uh, women and agriculture. I want you to unpack some more the relationship between women and land. So I've said this several times. I hope people don't think it's like a broken record. Um, because African women could gi can give birth, no, because women give birth, because it's not just African women. Mm. Because women give birth. In Africa, men took a, a particular spiritual definition of that, unlike in the other two races. African men said, because you can give birth, it means you are also creators because we are creating life. But because we have a supreme being or a, a originator, what religion calls God, so they were also careful that they don't want to equate us with the originator, with umvelingang, for some people who come out of Ramakosa. So, but, so you are pro-creators, so you are assisting in the mm -hmm. process of creation. So because of that, they said, okay, the process of planting and reaping is also a process of creation because when a sperm enters the womb, it must die when and it, for it mm. to produce mm. life. So now chala, the same thing. Imbe, the seed must die for it to come out now as a new and living thing. So it was seen as a continued process of giving birth, which is why women were the ones who were... Um, profiled and sanctioned is the word I'm looking for, to be agriculturalists. So African spirituality said if men touch the soil and they start being agriculturalists and tillers of the land, the land will go barren because a sperm is barren on its own because that's why when you spill it on the ground, it will dry and you can't even see if it, there ever was anything. So, but when the Muslims came in 476, CE, which is the era in which we live, common era, Christians say Anna Domina after Christ. When they came uh, about seven or eight centuries down, 1400, both those races, Mongoloid and Caucasian, changed the agricultural system because they moved us to the what we call the cash crop, 
So now we were farming for selling commercial agriculture and they wanted men in the forefront because they came with patriarchy also. So they didn't want us because they realized that gives us power because then we control the markets. Then yes. we control. So they relegated us to the household and men were forwarded into the cash crop as agriculturalists. And the African land truly is barren. You know, I don't know if people are aware, but mm -hmm. the desert is encroaching in the African continent by day. I mean, we never were a continent that struggles with rain. We do now. And then when it rains, you know, we, we are experiencing, yes, people say it's global warming. Uh, that's an argument. And yeah, that's another uh, 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 um, SDG, by the way, mm. climate action. I know, yes, people say it's global warming. But for Africans, global warming came long before the United Nations got together to talk about global warming. For us, the day they turned our agriculture upside down, because that's how it is, you know, it's standing on its head. The day they did that, we, we entered global warming. Just that it has been affecting us, so they didn't give a shit. Now it's affecting the world because of what white people are doing in the sky and wherever, mm -hmm. you know. They're, like they did with us, they are just changing patterns of originality or isintu. They are changing the original and natural way of being. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. So when they did that and forwarded men and relegated us to the house, we then were left with our gardens. That's why even up to today, the informal, so-called informal settlement, I hate even that word because it's insulting, but the so-called informal settlement in Africa, which is small uh, scale agriculture, food gardens, ama market, it's still African women, so it couldn't, the traces refused to go away for us to see. I think Amatlos are making sure for us to see and understand because if it completely goes away, people will start denying it that it never happened. So that's agriculture for us. And how did you experience global warming? The soil, the land started being barren. It harvest, you know, people will tell you each decade, if I need a half a bag of seeds this much to produce, I'm making an example, uh, 10 rows of maize. Nam Sanje, I will need more of that to produce mm. two rows of maize. Notwithstanding, good Monsanto has also been on a campaign. We have a good thing in this face. You never know. Oh, Babu Shabala, it's an elephant. You never know where to chew from the ear, mm. from the tail. We, I mean, they've truly, and he has a phrase, they've reduced this to dust, truly. So Monsanto, behind our backs through the years, has been withdrawing original seeds from Africa, forcing our governments against loans. Ne? And they need the loans. Mm -hmm. So they've been withdrawing original seed and giving us what you call GMO seeds, genetically modified seeds. And the thing with genetically modified seeds is they are they're not replantable. So you must buy all the time. I mean, that's like a reduction of people to poverty, which makes me interested. I would want to know in the indicator under end poverty or end hunger, is there an indicator that says withdraw GMO seeds? Thank you. Because they create hunger. If I can replant my seeds, when I eat and eat, and eat, I keep the. Now you can't, you must eat everything, and then when the planting season comes, you start afresh again. And that would mean the nutrients are also compromised. Oh, of course, the nutrients, <laughs> they are not compromised, they are gone. That's why Abantu who study these things say, oh, uneshori, you think you're eating an orange. You're just eating something that looks and tastes like an orange because we don't know how much of it is left in that orange. You then know? we're going to get sick, Mos. We are sick. We're not going to get sick. We are a sick people. We have diabetic children, 9, 10, but diabetic. Abantu have high blood. They haven't even given birth to their first child. Bane high blood. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. And then the tablets they put you on themselves make you crazy because they fuck your liver up. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle. It's like a race to the bottom, to the grave. That's the life they've given us. From the moment we are born, we are on a race to your grave. Because remember, our ancestors used to live. The, the, mm -hmm. the average age was like 120 years. Mm -hmm. Nam Sanje, when we are 90 something, we are ancient. We put you on a pedestal and we sing praises to you. And you reach that 90 something so unfunctional most of the time. I'll say, Zwa, I'll saboni, I'll go. No, guys, our people lived up to 120, perfectly mm. healthy. 
So all of you out there, Abu Helen Zila, who tell us colonialism brought civilization, fuck that. <laughs> no, they've retarded us in ways that we will mm. never even begin to unpack in a podcast of one hour. It's mm. not possible. Uh, also, there was a relationship between the menstrual blood and the land, isn't there, is there not? Yes. Yes, there is. So that confirms that women are the custodians. Definitely. But also just the fact that we could make rain. <laughs> because rain and agriculture go together, Sisi. They can have watering can, nose pipe, a pompini. Remember, we were natural people. So even if we had built ama wells and those things, we were still careful not to fuck up the environment. So rain truly was still the number one mniselo of Yitelo Zetu. Mm. So if says Chalile and So it was women who called the rain. Yes, that's why we have the name Rain Queens. I've never heard of the name Rain King. But because spirituality is creative, understand me and let your, 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 your listeners understand me. It didn't preclude. Yabon Akfan Nasema Romain. They'll go and say, because it's a Bible verse, women can't teach men, women must learn in silence. Uh, the man is the head of the family. So only priests can, so only males can be priests. They'll never allow for even a creative application of a woman who really is better than all the men as a priest. They never allow it. So is spirituality a sequel? While spirituality said, Women make the best rain queens, but it didn't preclude that once or twice there could be a man who does. But I think it was not common. That's why we didn't even coin the term rain king, but they were there, negligible, they were there. Primarily, it was the function of women. And it was primarily a function of women because, remember, in the underworld, we say that because... For us in the afterlife, in the underworld, it is the matriarchal spirit that is the judge. Uh, Abandu Basekemet applied it. That's why you see Ma'at with feathers. She was the justice woman, but not the, li the, the live justice. It's the ju afterlife justice. So it is the matriarchal spirit that ushers people to Ugubutelwa Nabagubo. To, ugu, ugu, to join the ancestry. It is the matriarchal spirit that will judge if your spirit or your soul is ready. Uguti, ungaba ilozi. That is why I don't understand people abaluzu mama last week and then next week sebayam pasha segu ilozi. Ganjan, that person is still on their own journey. I mean, they are not even looking at you at that time. Bapetu inga agzabo labakona. You know, being cleansed up so that bazo butelo kwa bagubo. It's the matriarchy that does that. Which is why msamo si toko za nboko kwa nabomkul. Because it's the matriarchy spirit maupatha that will say to the underworld, man, 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 it's on now. So who's coming? Bakona, abakona, abapizi. If bukona, abapizi. Pela, it's a real life. It's not just people abalele doing nothing. As Christianity has made us believe. No, guys. It's a real world. That's why I like the term parallel worlds or multiple universes. So it's a real life. Papi is nendos up. So on tiki kaya ti. Bo miya. Fanege uko koko wa miya o in charge. Ati mani, 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 guys. Ntiki is on. We need to listen to ntiki. But abanyi, I'm nan pizza. I'm nan denza logo. Okay. Kwa kwenye nga atageko funega ayo. O opumele layo. As a ata hai bani no bani. You will come. You'll live what you're doing. Because now it's the contract we have with the living. Abekwaza, mm. we have to listen. So yeah, into ya 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 koko ge ileyo, into yet with agriculture ileyo, into yet of being rain queens ileyo, cause they understood guti. Akwaza ti na ifimvula yini. Ugoko la pa we listen better because we matriarchy na and it we listen better than if gukwaza indota. So I like that because for me it links with what uh, Christianity and is Islam first and Christianity have come to call the absent God by us criticizing like the Christian child, but in by some newfound knowledge. But I saw that these people don't have a God; they have an absent God. Their God is not present in their lives. I like our God not to be present in our life because we are not stupid, because He's given us all the science and the spirituality to can cook things and get our own answers. That's why as Nalika Melitina by faith. I prayed for rain by faith. No, no, no. Um judge didn't pray for rain by faith. She mixed the science and the spirituality, climbed that mountain, and then fetch the rain. So as Naya who pray for and wait in faith. See no pray for and fetch. I love that. Mm. 
So with the Rain Queen um, now a man uh, in the current times, uh, how does that affect us as a nation, as a South African nation? Because obviously it, there's a ripple effect when Ababedi do this or Amavenda do this. It's we're all one. So what is it saying about our queendoms and our... <laughs> I'm going to say something that, again, I'm sure there'll be such a backlash, but it's fine. You said because we are all one. I'm not sure. Of all these nine ethnic groups, which are not even nine, who are forced to be Kosa, who are forced to be Kosa, who are forced to be Kosa, who you know. So... Obano wa patha wa apiza the underworld what? Hai bandwenko singogu sesi ashanga na we are becoming a republic eh, whose finances are controlled in mm. London, whose reserve bank is not owned by us, eh, whose natural resources is given for free to white companies. Ukono wa patha wa tela, and if upati le wa tela, you think our ancestors would have agreed to that rubbish? That we are now a republic that's destitute to hunger because we literally control nothing except the right to vote. Now you see control if we are voting for the right person because if we were to vote now for a radical person, if Biko was alive and we were to put Biko in power now as an ala black consciousness, yeah, okay, you think that CNN would be in favor of us or America. So truly, I, I am asking a genuine question and I'm not going to say anything about it. Your viewers can answer and it can be a conversation. Ukonumdo wapatha, what says the republic ngo? Eh, majlozi a mazulu, majlozi a batswana, abobani, eh, you will all subject to whoever is in power. Like, a majlozi onke ngogu are subjecting to a majlozi abavenda, ngoba the president is venda. Uko no patile wakela? So is the underworld working with us? I don't know. You guys can answer that yourselves with the information I've given you. I mean, the amount of confusion out there tells you something is not gelling. The amount of poverty, the amount of anger, the amount of hopelessness, the amount of rising crime, the amount of rape, the amount of just vile lack of Ubuntu. You know, I was listening on, I still call that channel, ANN7. Newsroom. 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 By interviewing Gabi, it in Gabi, for Mangabi. E.T. before Siobula Lumdu, si a good traditional healer. I'm just like, I ran out of the shower and being late because I must come to you. Baby, I'm just like, you see who? Hi, guys, let's decolonize language. Since when did Inyanga and Omtagat become the same thing mm. in Africa? You see who? Inyanga is there, Ugu Nyanga. That's why Kamala, Inyanga, Nyesko, Nyanga, Ulapa, Upilisa. Inyanga has the matriarchal spirit. That's why Inyanga, the moon. Um sevens we nyanga ugupilis aksubulala. Um sevens we sangoma ukbula aksubulala. If u consulta a traditional whoever the fuck they are called, and they give you mutogulal mundu abas they are not in sangoma, they are not in nyanga. Just decolonize your language. Ustele straight to guting ye em tagatini. Wangi tagati sangabulalu mundu. Ngoba, you're not going to come and affirm colonial things here. Called a witch doctor. Woyini witch doctor. You can't be a witch and a doctor in Africa. Aiki nyanga mtagat or mtagat nyanga. Sina yule yondotina. But they coined that term on purpose so that they rubbish everything we do as witchcraft. So, and they are so... There's a movie you must remind me before Skriba to talk about Leng Tewicheke because the Europeans, Caucasian race, is so obsessed with witchcraft. It's not funny. They started with their own people. They are so obsessed with witchcraft, maybe because they are witches, they are the ones who are governing them. That's why they are so obsessed with it. So, unga gulinge kawye emuntu in ogubula li sabantu, o zisa abantu, o wenzu muntu, abe sisi yoyo yo ujale ngaye, claiming kutu ya mta, uti bo uyegu sango, manoma bo uyegu nyang, bo uye mtagatini. And le zango ma that double bank, baya kwa zuk tagata, baya kwa zuk lapa, baba tagati plain. Ngoba, isi ntu sempela, izozi, elipili eli sayo, ngege ligufu melu bulale. Manje, wanu namatlo zanjan, abulala yu, napili sayo, in one body, mm. 
it means the evil is more in you than the good. Um, tagati, so mm. go, stop going around parading as a sangoma. I can tell you guys, truly. I'm getting go we are in the era of rights. I so claim the right space. I mean, no, guys, please, man, I beg, I beg. Hey. Just saying, um, tagati, so we know. <laughs> so that I'm going to go to the with a straight face, but I mean, bang is a psugo. But stop deceiving our people and confusing, and we've been confused enough. So there definitely is good and bad in African of spirituality. That's why Sina Lika Melitu Moyo Mubi, Amafufunyan, Angit. Yeah, that is from Uptagati. So choose what you are. You cannot be both. I refuse. I'm at Lozeta, not confused. Don't join the colonialist uh, point of departure and rubbish all our things to evil. Please, Apego. Earlier on, you, you made a reference to feminism. And you know, a lot of the time, there's this conversation where the men are now saying that uh, feminine, feminism is ruining their women, their African women. Mm. So can we unpack what feminism... Telulung is your thing because it's... Yeah, I, I want you to look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So just to mm. unpack if feminism and... Feminism is a difficult concept for me in Tiki. Everything has rationale, either for existing, for being formed, for... Now, the rationale of feminism mm. is SDG number five, gender equality. Now, but right, but really gender equality because... I don't, I've never heard the other two races talk about an era where they had a matriarchy, where matriarchy was in power, where their underworld is matriarchal, where they, 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 you know, the list is endless. So, but really gender equality is a new thing for them. I am not fighting for gender equality in Goba. We had it. Colonialism, both the Arab and the Caucasian one, told us it's demonic to allow women to lead. So, I'm not fighting for equality. I am fighting to the return of the proper culture of African people, to proper indigenous culture. But when we do that, everything falls into place. Matriarchy reigns. The African woman stops being the property of the men. We stop confusing a witch and a doctor. We stop thinking Afri the sum total of African spirituality is to consult. We stop thinking, you know, so for me, the bigger thing is, is the total return of Africans to their indigenous way of living. Mm -hmm. Obviously, knowing that it cannot be 100% like it was before, because mm -hmm. I mean, we have Abu McDonald and whoever now, mm -hmm. but we can still try and craft and, you know, Ngoba Manji, we're not crafting anything. We are just victims of this capitalist system. So, e, 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 e motivation then, yeah. Feminism, I don't quite find myself in it as an African woman. That's one. Two, mm. if feminism does not acknowledge that African women were once in charge, that African women are in charge spiritually, all the things I've just talked about. In fact, sociology teaches officially now that Africa never had matriarchies. You know, but I, it was maybe matrilineal, whatever the case, but no, there was no matriarchy. They refused. That's how much they've made us own patriarchy. And those issues, I call them indicators. Feminism does not address them. So, Ibanzima in Toyoguti, Nizbandaganyan feminism. But in the spirit of oneness, I can march with feminists to a certain point. It's like we'll be on a black consciousness in the ANC. Mm. Mm. Because knew that I'll support the African National Congress. On certain things like uh, freedom now, obviously we are tired since 1652. But we knew that there are going to come concepts where I now have to allow them to work on their own. And Meleng Bambu short left. The land belongs to all who live in it, both black and white. People will say, oh, okay. saying enough so feminism in Jalo, I can we walk with them, Tina Afro gender people to a certain point and then there are points where we say, Oh, okay, I sala apagetina, sesia chigangoba. We are not about revenge to men. Despite all the bullshit African men have done to us, eh? 
because they bought into patriarchy and they really have done horrendous things to us as a species and they continue to. Mm -hmm. But we understand that we are all victims of colonialism and it has affected us differently. We also understand that as African women, we are psychologically more gifted to be stronger than men mm. because we are the spiritual ones. So we understand them as a people and as a package. So we don't grudge them for the things they've done to us. So Afro gender does not seek to revenge against men. We just seek to say bullshit, guys. I mean, eh, eh, man, I pay mm. We are Africans. We have all been misled in different ways by Arabs and by white people. Can we not just not throw this bullshit aside and just map a new dispensation and new definition of freedom for our people where we found each other? And can we learn from our ancestors uh, what those concepts are that we can still use? That's Afro gender. So, yeah, I think people understand now because people fight me. I mean, I lost a post I applied to be in charge of something called TCDC Training Center for Development Cooperation. It's in Tanzania. Mm. But I mean, it says it deals with East Africa and Southern Africa. So I was just like, up, I'm a Southern African up other than Zimbabweans. Mm. So can we be seen? We are Southern Africans. But I lost that. And I, and I did well in the interview. And I was told I've done well. And I only learned last year why I lost that post. Because somebody in the panel went and said, she's not a feminist. Uh, and being not a feminist is seen as being against women. No, fool that said so, and I even know her name. The fool that said so, I'm sure she'll hear this podcast. Not being a feminist does not mean we're anti-women. Not mm. being a feminist means we are, we are full stand. Mm. You understand who you are as an African woman. They don't and I hope because you are an African woman where we are sitting and listening, you will snap out of feminism one day and be an Afro-gender person. Because we are still lost. Feminism is the first step. It's like religion. You need to migrate from that shit. I mean, we are born into it because your parents initiate you into it. I mean, I was baptized into Catholicism. I couldn't even walk and talk things. It's all baby. So it was a phase. You must snap out of it at a certain point and migrate to spirituality. Feminism in general, it's the first stage through which we mobilize women. That thing shouldn't last forever. I mean, you can't die a feminist. It means you are not growing in your knowledge. Bullshit. No, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get lit in the comment section. So, you know, um, I feel like a lot of the reason women especially don't have that belief in themselves is because we've never been put on a pedestal. Yeah. You know, we've never been celebrated. Even when you are a powerful woman above your counterparts, your male counterparts, your male counterparts will get the hail and recognition. So how do we move in that circumstance? Hey, to a person that has suffered that, you know, Ziggy, uh, uh, black people normally say, <laughs> I always smile. Yeah, ER is an arm of service. It's not the sum total of the defense force. You have ER, you have EF force, you have armor medics, that mm. same, you have the Navy, that's people uh, uh, at the sea. For us, we have four arms of service. That's mm. the defense force. For America, you would have Marines. You have special forces. It mm. depends, you know, on your defense force. Mm. So to date, the South African Navy is the only arm of service that has a department called Transformation, which I fought for and was the first director transformation. I instituted so much change in the Navy. It's just undeniable. Mm. But it's not celebrated, and I'm okay with it. I mean, <laughs> I know what I've done. Mm. They might not know and acknowledge it and appreciate it. It really doesn't matter. Ngoba lo koko lo in the underworld has blessed me for it mm. already. So that's how women should take it truly. And and I'm not angry with them, and, and I, I, I'm not even grudging them. I understand them in their context, just like I said, I understand African men in their context. I understand them in their context. We live in a patriarchal system. If I was a man having done that, they would be singing my praises up to now. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I just want to even encourage African women who are listening, who've done amazing things, who are struggling at work, pushing people up, and then the same people you are pushing up are the ones who tend against you. Please do not tire. In Africa, we don't look at our blessings from the same person that we have helped. Tina mm. umdu mundu ngabantu. So can it does not mean my help will come from Sia. Ubonganus on Caesar. 
because amandlozi athumela ubongani still for what i did good for siya mm. yeah, mm-hmm. so don't look at it that way otherwise it will mm. it will kill you you will stop being good mm. so no we do it because amandlozi ayabona and amandlozi will pay you back for that the universe also sees it's funny that white people know it but then christianity fucks them up because then they disinterpret it because and it in english it what goes around comes around mm. yeah so send out good vibes whether they appreciate it whether mm. they come and say thank you whether they no keep sending them out because we are chala that's planting the harvest is coming are we born you are born Yeah. Someone says challenge niam au nandawo yokuhlala somebody says stay in my house for two years you you don't know it's because of the good you did maybe even 10 years ago to somebody who went and cried tears that fell on the ground saying he helped me so much it will never go unnoticed even if the notice will come back um 10 years after coming it will come so no 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 african women shouldn't tire we know that that dispensation is not about us i mean i marvel at how amazulu are not celebrating umkabai instead they have such horrible things to say about her and i'm just thinking hello guys you wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for umkabai i've told this story so many times i don't know if i should Tell it again i mean truly ubaba <laughs> kamkabai was in kosundaba umama kamkaba he had given birth only to girls yena une twin umama and i think there's another girl whose name i do not know and uya shona akashiyanga indlalifa or an a in english they they are patrilineal They're not patriarchal the two things are not the same they are patrilineal you're going to have to explain that to us after this yeah, okay. i'll explain it so uh, it meant that whoever sits on the throne is going to be a king not a queen So kakefa umama wabo mkabai angashiyanga i e ene umkabai uyambona uba The English audience is going to cry because this story is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so uyambona umkabai ubaba ke inkosi undaba ukuthi aka this one is not a woman's man truly uh, he's not going to remarry. Mm. So she stands up on her own. Uya phahla qala does her things right uthi ngizaya mfunela umfazi goes and sows umasibiya isithakazelo saka sibiya umthaniya that's why amazulu bathi sisizwe sikamthaniya sources umasibiya but ngoba uphahle kahle the first pregnancy kamasibiya truly becomes a, a, a boy child igama lakhe usenza ngakhona uthi inkosi undaba kumkabayi umkabayi wenze ngakhona senze ngakhona we did well igama lakhe usenza ngakhona Senza ngakhona isishakazi father. Ukhumbula ukuthi amazulu at that time were a very small nation. They weren't mm. as big as they are. Ngoba bekunabathethwa abakadingiswayo kuna eh abakazwide uphakathwayo bangisazi babizwani kune saselangeni they were different they had all their own kings. It's shaka that through what we call state formation which is a natural process for all people was Uh, are taking conquering and wielding and growing this uh, amazulu nation that they are today now you tell me how would you not give credit to a woman that ensured your continuity in essence that's what mm. mkabai did mm. she ensured a continuity mm. yamazulu njengoba bengamazulu namhlanje but we don't hear them bambonga bamphahla abasho nixi ngisho kuphakama le nkosi ekhona manje angaze ngezo mna athi siyalibonga idlozi laka mkabayi abanandaba nayi but they will thank shaka and they will thank all the kings that came and it's okay it's african women we are psychologically very strong by the way than our men so despite all of that we shall keep rising there were some interesting comments you made about the presidential run between um, CR17 and Gosazana Zuma. Mm. Mm. Can you unpack them again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said that I mean as a lay person that I am. Uh and the ANC having done a round of over 100 years now and not ever producing a female president. Despite the fact that they were Marxist at some stage and Marxism and women equality was the thing because now first even 
met the word women, equality, gender, whatever. I first met it in MK camps because we were supported by Russia, Cuba, and those people. And they truly were against women oppression. They are for equality. It's not some newfound United Nations goal number five. You know, this thing's been there. The social mm -hmm. communist countries followed it and did it. So if I am a genuine member of the ANC, and Cyril Ramaphosa, and I see that, hey, this organization is not actually doing well on gender. It's 100 years we have produced nobody. And I have the money to make this happen. And I mean, he does have, did have the money and still does have the money. And I see there is someone who is running against me, calling Kosaza Nazuma, who truly, I mean, I get to perfect, but against all odds, Nkosa is a credible person. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean she doesn't have mistake. I still remember his scandal, Sake, Nombong, any Nemali, as a case at N, whatever. I'm not nullifying that. Mm. But on average, Nkosa Zana has done well, and Nkeko illiterate, and she can double bank between Zulu and English. Mm. I mean, she's she's a person that we need. She did her run in the AU. Mm. She, she's, she's credible. Leadership. She's credible mm -hmm. as a leader. So... Uh, I mean, if I was really and I was really genuine about being a member of the ANC, I would have said, for the name of the ANC, for the legacy that I'm building, while I have the money to can outrun her, because it's the only way she, he outran her, Ngemali. Ngoba, I mean, guys, it's, it's, it's an open secret to go to these things cost money. Everywhere, not just here. So I would have said, yeah, I'm taking my money. I don't care all of you male who are supporting me and who want me to be in power so that Nizo Jangam and Ingen, because that's what they do with all presidents, by the way. It's not just him. It's the people who put you in power back bigger because Bafunu Chang Awe, Baboli, they're corrupt. So I would have said, Minango Siril Guti, as in Yanbona Nonke, and truly Hang Landaban, and at the end of the day, I'm building my legacy, my life legacy, and I'm building the name of the ANC. I'll take my money and support Nkosazana and make sure I made history that I facilitated. I built the equity mm. to produce the equality mm. that produced the first president woman of the African National Congress and of the country. So I was just merely questioning to say, is it really genuine? Because, I mean, if I was, I would have done that. But I raised that in a Twitter interview, and a guy ate me alive before I could even finish my point, and you were there, mm. and the person said, all I heard him say was, it's not that easy, but then the organizer cut him off yeah. because he wasn't interested. But that response has been eking at me mm -hmm. even. It's not that easy. What do you mean it's not that easy? Men get irritated when you want to put a woman in leadership. No, but apart from that, Nsigi, Nagati, it's not that easy. It means he's saying to us there are processes in the ANC that disabled that. It's not that easy. What are you saying to us? We thought we vote for you, Ngoba, you are the ANC, because you do what we want, and it's easy for you. If it is not easy to maneuver within the ANC, then how difficult it is for them to maneuver as a government? Should we even bother about them? Ge? If it is not easy for them, good, but hey, guys, for the sake of history, if it is not that, e then how easy is it going to be for them to fight white monopoly as a government? Then, most there's never going to be a female leader coming from ANC. Wow. That's depressing. That's what it sounds like. Truly depressing. Yeah, that's what it looks like at the moment, unless something mm -hmm. changes. Because even when you look at the leadership structures now, you don't really see fire brands or women that are outspoken and it's well-behaved women yeah. who end up in top-level yeah. politics, yeah. even in EFF. And uh, that well-behaved... Uh, Ntsigi, and I'm breaking it on paper. Sometimes it's nice for me to break English. That well behave uh, permeates so many things. Ngoba, look at Lindy, we're in the saga of uh, the Jews. I mean, we support Palestine. How can any right thinking South African sit here and say what Israel is doing to Palestinians is okay? That's what we suffered under apartheid, but they are suffering even worse. That's why we used to call apartheid a Zionist state. Because we were seeing what the Jews were already doing in Palestine from 1948. So how can you sit here today and tell us, no, we're not, we are supporting the Jews. You don't see anything wrong that the Jews are doing to Palestinians. So Lindiwa was right, you know, to be anti-Israeli as a foreign minister. Mm -hmm. She was correct, and we should mm -hmm. have supported her for mm -hmm. that. And maybe through this podcast, we must just say, sorry, Lindiwa. Mm -hmm. You know, you try to do the right thing, but you are an African female, Oksala, if the men that... Uh, are around you, Bayak Bona, when's this thing, and they are not in support, 
in the end you are on your own which is which which is what happened but no you were doing the right thing because you've suffered apartheid as an activist your dad fought apartheid you understand mm. the, this issue of being called occupied you understand occupation mm. you understand a people that comes into your land bomb you in your houses uh, arrest your young men turn them into jail beds tear gas you put uh, Baba Bizani, you know, Palestinian checkpoint. Palestinians sometimes go to three, four checkpoints just from their house to go and buy isinkwa bread mm. or from their house to go to work. Mm. You understand that, Lindwe Sisulu, because you lived it under mm. apartheid. So you did nothing wrong. You just mm. did it for a country that really doesn't appreciate women it's one. But for a country who defines politics as party politics. If we did not define politics as party politics, even opposition parties should have supported Ulindi on that, by the way. How but we left her in the cold alone after she did that. Now you tell me any other woman minister will be bold to do what is right, what is ethical, because right. what she did was ethical. It was principled. It was principled. I mean, truly, guys, they can come against me if they want, but fuck Israel. Truly. And the thing is that even with the judiciary, she keeps coming forward, but you can see that they silence her. So mm. there's a culture of silencing mm. women mm. in South Africa. It's not even in South Africa, Ziggy. I was talking yesterday in a workshop and I said, are we not ashamed of ourselves as a continent? And then people will say, oh, but even the other races, how many female presidents have been in Asia? or in the Latin America, or in Latin America, or in America, I, I don't want to compare myself with those people, as I said, because I don't have a history of them having been gender equitable and having been gender equal in their pre-colonial or pre-ancient history. But we have. So I hold Africa on the issue of gender at a more stringent and strict measurement than I hold the other two races. Because we have a history of equality. We come from it. Now, aren't we ashamed then as Africa that we virtually have only produced since Ghana 1957? This is 2022. Uh, the crew's going to count for me and they will tell me how many years, but I'll continue talking so they will indicate how many years to me. 1957 to 1922. We have only produced two female leaders, Ubanda was Malawi, who was good even after, and so many horrible things were said about her. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, is Joyce Banda the alpha and omega of Malawi corruption? So you guys were okay until Banda came into being. Mm -hmm. She's the epitome of your corruption. Nobody else is corrupt except her. And then it was the one was a Liberia, mm -hmm. you know. Two, I don't know of any other. Maybe I'm wrong. I always say to any audience I talk to, I know those two. You know? 65 years, a whole continent of over a billion people Shucks. has only produced two female presidents. That's why I ask any sane woman out there who votes, why do you bother? If you are not voti voting for a female candidate, why do you bother? You are voting for patriarchy, for rape, for women oppression. You are voting for men who use you when it's election time and when they are elected, they make sure that in the top six or top ten or top fifteen or top whatever these parties have, they are balancing now. Yep. No, in the men they don't balance. With women they'll say, oh, we are only four. Yes, we shot are two women here. Wow. wow the irony guys. is that the men drink from our waters but when it's time to celebrate and put people in positions then they put men the patriarchy remember i've talked also about this so much what we call customary law <laughs> is not african culture and it's not african law customary law was written in kzn it was called it was a british colony at that time a, a natal colony i'm a british and it was written by U -U somebody who the, the the father and the son so i don't want to put confuse the names mm. for our listeners so i'll call the surname only shepstein that's whom we have named port shepstein after such a decry such a crime against humanity but he's the one who wrote e, e, e customary law pen to paper Ngoba angiti, they always say we are oral people mm. so how come customary law is it's written and yafana came to cairo it has got three overriding principles from Cape to Cairo, IG. 
It has a history. Ushepstein, by Ashuguti, he customary law kept changing it, draft lay, draft lay, uh, primarily moving from English law because he was a British a colonial official. And then, because we already had been a Dutch colony, so there was also traces of Dutch Roman law. So Wakala infusing Brit, uh, English law into it, and then at a certain stage, infused Roman Dutch law, and then at a certain stage there was French law. Mm. I mean, it it was just it was a cooking and melting pot, and it kept changing. And I mean, we're not focusing on it. We can, if you want, in another focus mm. with dates and everything. I've done it for you, Women's League, mm. presenting to them once. But at the end of the day, it does say he made sure that three things don't change. As the draft one came, draft two, whatever. In fact, he made sure three things will stay overriding. They will not change. The first one is that the man is the head of the family. The second one is that uh, children are their fathers, so they take the father's surname. Mm. Three is the, what is called the law of primogeniture, which means I ilifa, the heritage, goes to the firstborn male. That's why during apartheid, if a roomed house couldn't be written against your name as a woman, if you only had girl children, they would look for your brother or their uncle or whoever and write it against them. It was the law of primogeniture. These are not our laws. Manta DC would not have said uh, everything must be written against the first boy child when she was queen mm. in Jovgazi and a uh, consort queen of Abatlokwa. Uma, um, judge one and judge two were not even consort because consort means, uh, no, she was regent, sorry. Mm. Uh, consort means you are married to a king. Regent means Ubanbele Umduana. Regnant, which only Africa has meant you are a queen as a queen as a queen as a queen because Bona mm. Bakalangogu no Elizabeth and whoever no Victoria, we had that mm. pre colonially. And I mean, Nubia had over 100 years of it, the regnant queens. So, I, 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 men do what you asked, Guti. Why do they drink from us? Then turn around. They have swallowed patriarchy, hook, line, and sinker. They believe it. And then the church reinforces it because the Bible says, Women must learn in silence. Women cannot teach men. The man is the head of the house. You, can you see all those three principles reflected here? Islam does the same because Islam, I mean, is comes at the bedrock of Christianity. Christianity yeah. came first. Islam came after. And I mean, Islam is really Old Testament of, of the Bible. Judaism does the same. It's mm -hmm. Old Testament of the Bible. That's why the three are called the the religions of the book. Mm. Uh, they all apply those three principles. I always said to people, Lababa kulumi pure language, mfuna mazulu, ase KZN, kibata basutu bali sutu, abatwana basi butwana, angfun lababa fana namna ubala e khauting. Kifuna mnio mfuna elisisho in your language, e siti indota in togo e kaya, that's original. Usfunu njele gut, lesisho saskona ngeskatska shaga, saskona pre-colonial, saskona sese ngabanguni, before we even split into Zulu, Kosa, Ndebele, and Swati. Ungele gut skona na, skoni si chwe situ mfazi, any property in a sin. Mm. What weight can we use for property? What weight can we borrow and use for property? Into your own eye. Umfaz, umfaz, ili falen dota. Umfaz, into nje that a man owns. It's interesting. So, okay. Men do these things in Tiki because truly they believe in customary law. And I tell our lawyers, I always say that. I tell our lawyers, truly, there's something called Black Lawyers Association. I don't know what you guys do. The fact that customary law is still what is used to govern Africans who don't want to be governed under the Republican law says that our lawyers truly would be called They need a tiny little tinge of black consciousness so that they can start championing and fighting these things. Because Angiti, we say you are Afrocentric because we are saying in whatever area where you are, brighten the corner through black consciousness and Afrocentricity mm -hmm. where you are. Bring the African perspective where you are. And customary law is not African perspective, guys. That thing lawyers should have fought Dala to say see I last. It's so interesting you say that because um, our editor Usia was saying that um, the woman's role is to cook for him. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have defined roles as we wrap up the conversations are there defined roles for men and women in african culture yes they are and it's not just in african culture there are defined roles everywhere uh that's why i said for us the defined role 
was agriculture and by virtue of agriculture it was the economy by virtue sorry it was the markets by virtue of the markets it was trade by virtue of trade it was then the economy by virtue of that it was then ceo of health in the house and ceo of health in the house meant you know what must be cooked and how what must be balanced au pegeli ngokubona namhlanje bapheka kanjalo especially these caterers ban pegeli chakalaka bapheki pumpkin and i'm just like why are you killing us they are both yellow give us one we want a green put beetroot balance these nutrients you know don't give us spinach na ma green beans ne broccoli we are getting the same thing we are killing us it's an overkill but we knew those things we knew ukuthi angeke uthathi rosemary if again pumpkin you can't take cinnamon we pegen a papa is sweet so we planted these things so we knew them mm. na so the role came from there <laughs> it never came from oppression mm. it now presupposes that if i'm in a household now of the republic where i'm employed and he's not employed it does it really make sense ukuthi mina ngibuye khaya asahleli yena the whole day alindi ukuthi mina ngizoza ngizopheka because in that situation it presupposes good see i must say i see this expertise that you have and really angnayo because my mm. mother did me a an injustice uh, so I want you to show me how this is done so I can begin to do it. And then on days when I feel like I see you've done this a lot now. No man abeng katele ngibuye msebenzini today I want to be the one who does it. It's a balance. Ngoba uh, we did that because they were in charge of livestock. Now when you're in charge of livestock as an elderly man and it it now we worked with girls they worked with boys. So mara na se i livestock iphumile ekuseni ngabo 5 or whatever time be iphuma ngayo. Angeka zahlale yena at the pastures or emadlelweni ngoba abafana bakhona inkomo kwa lokho xa sezidla ziyadla they are not a car they don't need to be driven all the time mm. so i mean they are let loose to be on their own we as guard and je kuthi azingene masimini kamakhelwane or whatever and then because we had learned amasimi kamakhelwane were even far from amadlelo we amadlelo amasimi were on their own so ama daughter would come back home and leave the boys there when they come back home all the children infants whoever who will not be taken with to emasimini because baso chiswa lang akalogu they will burn under the scorch of the african sun so it means the babies the toddlers whoever were left at home were left at home with who with the men because women were out with the girls at the farms yes and a lot of societies in africa still practice it practice it by the way it can be a focus on its own societies where the traces are still alive so it's not even a true reflection to say children were raised by women in africa to a certain extent yes but children stayed nabo baba ganing because we were out mm. in the in the in the fields and then in the markets and then we would come home late says us good okay what do i mix this and this to cook for these people but they would have been at home attending to whatever needs to be attended to at home and then sit around have their beer discuss their things but children would be running around and they would be tending to them but i mean we would, would never take a, a four month old baby uyo mchisa ngilange masimini but kuna botate kaya it never happened it's not mm. true thank you thank you so much for taking your time to come and share your wisdom. I know it seems so short. And this is actually the longest <laughs> one of the podcast. How long <laughs> so has it been? It's been close to an hour, I'm sure. <laughs> so, but I'm going to we're going to have to invite you again because there's still so many things that we didn't unpack. Yeah. But Sabulela, I know that you're going to talk to your your children in the comment section and that you've got such an open heart and you are ready to feed us. Sabulela Gakulu doctor for taking the time. Tama kusonga majlozi. Moya right, moya u light, moya u right. It was such a beautiful conversation. I hope you guys when you are in the streets and socializing you're like, "Hi, my name is Ndiki Mazwa, I'm a moya right." You know what I'm saying? So that we all find <laughs> each other. Hashtag #moya I'll see you guys next week remember to keep donating so that we can pay the team and eventually pay guests and then buy our own equipment thank you so much to everybody who has donated we see you thank you to Sia to Tumi and Timbali and the rest of the team for beautiful work that they do on the podcast thank you guys see you next week tamako <laughs>